How does an alignment affect new electronics such as ADAS features? Where does the shop need to be concerned? And what's an alignment got to do with ADAS? I'm Jason Stahl, and we're going to find out next in the AirPro Diagnostics Collision Garage. First, let's break down some basics. ADAS has many features to assist drivers or actually take control of the vehicle when a parameter is met. Depending on the level of advancements in a particular vehicle, these responses rely on the fact that the vehicle is correctly communicating and aligned with all sensors to indicate where the vehicle is in relationship to the roadway. This is accomplished through cameras and radars and the forces and environment the vehicle is experiencing through G4 sensors and ABS. All of these inputs produce the desired output from the vehicle for the event the vehicle is sensing. The vehicle doesn't know you're in danger, it just reacts to inputs it's being given. So the phrase in computers and electronics of garbage in equals garbage out comes into play. If the vehicle is not correctly calibrated to all inputs, the output may not be the desired result. That's the human driving portion of ADAS features. The electromechanical power driving features and parking features adds even more complexity to the process of repairing and validating that the repairs are done and calibrated correctly. With all the sensors and controllers compensating for roadway changes, it doesn't take much deviance from OE specs to produce an incorrect input that will affect one of these features. The simple complaint of, my car seems to be pulling to the left, now becomes a much larger diagnostic process to find out the root cause. There's no light or DTC to guide you on something not being aligned correctly. We know all the sensors need to be correctly aimed on the vehicle structure to see down the road and in the correct zone of view to function correctly. Even a slight deviation will have an influence on the operation of the ADAS features. Another factor is the vehicle needs to be aligned to steer correctly in certain modes of operation, such as lane keep assist, lane departure, parking assist, and backup cameras. The validation that the steering wheel angle sensor is correct to vehicle alignment is a major component to the safe operation of these systems, as well as normal driving. This leads the focus to four wheel alignments being required to validate that all components are aligned correctly. An example would be a vehicle with lane keep assist. An alignment issue has created a slight pull to the left. This is steering the vehicle to the center line of the lane of traffic the vehicle is in. The vehicle lane keep assist is correcting constantly to bring the vehicle back to center. Not only is the driver being annoyed by having to keep correcting or putting pressure on the wheel to stay in the center, but due to the frequency of the corrections, the vehicle is indicating to the driver to stop and take a break as the vehicle is sensing that the driver is wandering in the lane. There's also a danger to this constant pulling to center. If you've ever operated a vehicle in this mode, you may have experienced the moment you as a driver begin to correct your position in the lane and the vehicle corrects itself too at the same time. This overcorrection can be a little startling for a driver. Now picture this happening on an icy road or snowy conditions for a driver who isn't prepared for it. Another example is using the backup camera that all vehicles now come equipped with. The camera and computer that uses the wheel's angle to track the vehicle's direction are dependent on the vehicle's alignment. A steering wheel or backup camera that is out of alignment may cause improper performance of the vehicle. It is no longer just about adjusting camber, caster, and tow. It's the ripple effect an incorrect working component will have on the vehicle's features or safety systems. We as repair professionals must look at the entire picture versus having a narrow focus on a component. Many vehicle manufacturers require that a calibration be done after a wheel alignment is performed. As mentioned before, it's critical to validate that all the vehicle sensors are in sync to the vehicle manufacturer's specifications as to how the vehicle is aimed and steering down the road, as well as the attitude to the roadway or the height and pitch or yaw angles. This is evidenced by some OEMs having prerequisites before a calibration is performed, such as full tank of gas and a level surface. This seems like a nuisance to a shop, but it is a required step to validate to OE specs. Demonstrations have been done showing the difference in how the vehicle is aligned to the road when a vehicle has a full tank of gas versus half a tank, and they prove that following the OEM's prerequisites is critical. For collisions that require a wheel alignment due to the damage, the alignment should be done prior to any calibration. 
What happens if the damage from the crash does not warrant a wheel alignment? This has perplexed the auto repair industry. Do we need to verify that the alignment is correct before doing a calibration? Regardless of the damage, some OEMs go as far as to say that an alignment must be done prior to a calibration, and even the calibrations need to be done on an alignment rack. An example would be the fairly straightforward procedure of replacing a grill on a vehicle. There's no damage to the suspension, but a calibration will be required. Is a wheel alignment called for? This depends on the OEM statements for their vehicles. There are two sides of this argument as to the necessity and price of repairing vehicles. There's also the argument of validating that the vehicle is operating correctly. Is the alignment a result of the incident or is this unrelated prior damage negating alignment costs to the third party? The vehicle's alignment directly interacts with all of the vehicle's advanced features. When to do an alignment is more the question. We know when damage from the crash requires it. When we do not verify alignment before our calibration, we may have a successful calibration. So, when the customer comes back with drivability issues, who's now responsible? That's something to think about. Proper alignment has everything to do with 8S features. I'm Jason Stahl from the AirPro Diagnostics Collision Garage. Thanks for watching.